Hey guys, it is Candy. Welcome back to Our Family Nest. So, a little bit different video today. I'm just kind of hanging out here in my office and I wanted to share with you guys kind of my YouTube story from beginning to end. And first, what inspired this is I have just been writing so much in this notebook over the past month or two um, when I was getting ready to launch my new business, Sky Bloom Media, I have the links and stuff below, where I am helping other people grow on social media and make money working from home. And one day when I was going through the digital course that I am now selling to help other people, it, I really just started reminiscing about my YouTube story and kind of like the moments back when Ken and myself we would just be in awe at like how much we got paid for brand deals and some of the stuff that we got the opportunity to do, the brands that we worked with. Like there's just so many crazy stories that actually if you're a newer viewer to our channel, like if you didn't watch back in the like 2015 to 2018, that's when the real crazy stuff went down. And the, the sad part is, is on September 12th, I'm going to be turning 51 years old, and I forget a lot of stuff. So it took me probably an entire afternoon to just sit down, and I have <laughs> three pages of notes. Please don't make that make you like click off this video, because it's going to be fun. But I really just thought, you know what, I want to document this in a video. I don't know how long YouTube is going to be around. But like, wouldn't it be cool if, you know, maybe at some point, I'm not even on YouTube anymore, but I could be like to my, you know, 13 year old grandkid, like, go look me up on YouTube. I'm gonna tell my YouTube story. You're gonna see how much money I used to make and get paid for brand deals and some of the brands we worked with and things we got to do. Like your grandma was cool kind of thing. I couldn't help but think that. So that's what's inspired this video is my pending, <laughs> lack of memory and really just maybe to inspire other people to like chase your dreams something I shared on my Instagram my new business Instagram the other day is um, a lot of people when they think about trying something new they think of like but what if I fail and that's everybody's biggest fear and I always like to think of but what if you don't like if you start today where might you be a year from now? And I wish somebody would have told me that back when I used to spend hours a day as a stay-at-home mom watching the Shaytards and Daily Bumps and just all these other families share their life on YouTube. And I just was so like enamored with the idea of just sharing their normal life, doing things they love, and then they were clearly making money off of it. It was like, how cool is that? Like, they're at home with their kids, both mom and dad, and they're killing it, you know? And Ken used to say, oh, you should do that too. And I'm like, no, no, I can't do that. So anyways, eventually I started picking up the camera. So somewhere around June 2010 is when I started picking up the camera. I didn't really vlog. I more so just picked up the camera and started just filming random things of the kids or my day, but there was not like conversation really. And then I remember we did this thing where we would like ask, ask the kids like a question of the day, which later, many years later, I remember doing question of the day and people accusing us of copying off of other people that did question of the day. And like, I literally had proof. I had videos that I was doing question of the day back in 2010. So I was like, stick it. <laughs> um, anyways, we would ask the kids like, if you had a million dollars, what would you do with it? Or who's the nicer parent? And, you know, Chase and Carly were so little and Andrew was a teenager and Blake was, oh my gosh, Blake was a riot back then. Blake is still that person that's like quiet, but always cracks the silliest jokes. So anyways, 2010 to 2011, I would make these videos and I uploaded them on a channel called Candy Sue G. And 
Ironically, Candy Suji is my new business Instagram because I didn't want to use my business name. I just wanted to use like my name so people knew who I was. So anyways, I did that for a while. At the same time of all that was going on, I was like a mommy blogger. I would share photos, tell stories. I had done that for many, many years, and I honestly don't remember even all the domain names I had. I know I had one named Pink Dreams back when I had three boys and I was just praying to someday get pregnant with a girl. I had one called Pieces of Me that was after the Ashley Simpson song. And finally, Our Family Nest was originated as a mommy blog. I never made a dime off of being a mommy blogger. I never picked up any kind of crazy traction because back then people, it was very few and far between that people were really like, blogs were fun back then because people weren't getting really paid to post stuff on their blogs unless you were really, really big. So all of us like little guys that were out there were just doing it for fun because we were stay at home moms and we were trying to make connections with other women. And I'm still friends with one of the amazing gals that I met through my mommy blog that lives in California. So it's just kind of a cool little side story. So anyways, it wasn't until January 2012 when I said, you know what? I'm gonna make a family channel. I'm not gonna do the candy thing. I'm gonna make a family channel and I'm gonna take all my old videos from the candy suji and slowly move them over so I did that like the first couple weeks of January in 2012, so almost 12 years ago, right? And then there's the little intro. If you go to Our Family Nest and then you look at videos and you sort by oldest to newest, you could see this little intro that Chase and Carly had made. And it's so funny because <laughs> I was like holding up pieces of paper, telling them what to say. They kept messing it up. And I'm pretty sure at the end of the video, there's like bloopers and I still watch it just to crack up because I just, it's hilarious. So if you look through our videos at the earlier part of when I launched my channel, there was even clips that like from family home videos, like our camcorder that I uploaded a few things. I remember we went on this little like ski trip and I made a video on iMovie with it. And I'm like, it was like a really edited video just played to music and I was like this is a lot of fun but I really didn't have the courage to like do this like be on camera I'm such an introvert that I was like I want to make this work but I really don't want to be on camera and I was determined to somehow figure out how that was going to happen of course it didn't happen so eventually I started making these videos where it was called can fat people do insanity do you guys remember the insanity workout? I can't remember who the one guy was, that like really buff muscular guy. He did this whole insanity workout. It's so hard. I should actually, I have the DVD set. I should try to do <laughs> that workout now. It'd probably be pretty funny. So I started sharing my weight loss struggles first before anything else. And I remember sitting down with the camera and starting over, keep starting over. Nope, keep starting over. Instead of really learning how to like edit, I just was trying to make like the perfect video. But how strange is it that of all things that this introverted shy person chose to share first, that I would choose talking about weight loss. And how crazy it is, it's now 2023 and I'm still freaking talking about weight loss. <sighs> Lifelong struggle, right? So about a year, in that year, I made about 50 videos, never got paid or anything. Just posted these videos, still kept watching everybody else and really never thought that like it, I would ever become anything, but I was enjoying it. I was having a ton of fun. February, 2013. How many of you remember the Harlem Shake? Can you guys believe that was flipping 10 years ago? So I go to Ken, I'm like, oh my God, everybody's doing the Harlem Shake. Shay Carl had done one with probably, I don't know if Maker Studios was around back then, but he did one with this huge group of people. People were just, I mean, they're really cool ones. And I'm like, I know there's only six of us, but let's just make one. We're down in our basement. Again, if you go to our channel or just our family nest Harlem Shake, it should come up. We actually ended up our clip 
very briefly made it on the Today Show. My mom was watching and had actually seen it and called us up and was like, oh my God, your guys' video was on the Today Show. It didn't mean anything. It did. They didn't share our name or anything. It didn't even bring like viewers to our channel. But we're like, we're on the freaking Today Show. Like we just, it was pretty cool. I remember kind of telling the kids, well, come on, if you guys help me with this YouTube channel, we can get popular and we'll really be on the Today Show kind of thing, like trying to use it to, you know, get them excited about wanting to make videos. And of course, back then, the age of all the kids, YouTube wasn't popular enough where like kids were talking about it in school, even like for Andrew. So it wasn't like really that big of a deal that we were making YouTube videos. Like it was kind of hush hush. No one was really talking about it. So I had only made 40 videos in the year 2013. I started doing like some of the challenges that people were doing, some random recipes, some DIYs. And I actually had done a couple like brands that had reached out to me and hey i'm gonna send you this for free you share it we're not gonna pay you but you get this free thing i mean i thought i was so cool like yeah free stuff are you kidding me i was so excited so that was all that really happened that year 2014 is when we really started like that summer especially so like literally i mean we're already now two years into this actually four years if you count 2010 i always kind of just like to say 2012 because that's when i launched our family nest okay 2014 is when we started doing the back to school videos we started following like all the trending challenge videos i don't know if that's when the exact years but i can remember like eat it or wear it and just taste tests, pouring things over your head, just pretty much all these food challenges that I can remember at some point along the ride, Angie was like, can we quit having to put horrible food in our mouths? Cause he, out of all the kids had the weakest stomach and he would literally gag over some of the stuff. So 2014 summer to winter that last six months of the year we had about four to five thousand subscribers somewhere in there and it was pretty exciting i mean family vlogging was starting to pick up but it still wasn't like oversaturated by any means there weren't that many people that were doing it so that october is when i had said God, we're getting these subscribers, our videos are getting views. Like, what if I really took this seriously? What if I did like the Shaytards and posted videos every single day? Maybe we would really, like, it would really start to take off. So that is when we started doing, like, some of Carly's, like, dance. We incorporated some of, like, stuff at her dance studio room tours, morning routines, back to school routines, night routines. We started getting more free stuff like we worked with Nutrisystem back then. And by January 2015, we grew to 25,000 subscribers. So it was pretty quick in like a three-ish month period. And we were making videos every single day. So you gotta realize for most people, unless you were really good at batch recording your content, I was working every single day and I was not good at batch recording. It was like, oh, this is what we're filming today. Edit it, comment on other people's videos, try to get my name out there, like all that stuff. It was taking a lot of my time, but I didn't mind because it was like, I'm on YouTube, I'm doing it, you know, it was so exciting. 2015 is when we started having some videos that went viral. Um, I looked on our channel, we had about 50 videos total that got over a million v views. One of our highest viewed videos is doing that Charlie Charlie, Charlie Charlie pencil challenge. Do you guys remember when people were doing that? Um, I don't remember what year that one was, but Painting Carly's Room in 2015 got 1.4 million views. Um, that year, what she got for Christmas. I mean, it was just following all the trends and doing what everybody else was doing that was rapidly growing in the family 
vlog space and it was really starting to take off more and more people really started doing it in, in 2015 so anyways 2015 by June that year so six months we grew from 25,000 to 100,000 subscribers and then one specific thing that I remember a funny story is Carly had camp that year would have been I think fifth grade camp and I had recorded like you know she's leaving for fifth grade camp there's a little bit I recorded at the school her on the bus about to leave and there were parents at the school that had found out about it and called the principal and told on me for sharing my daughter's leaving for camp experience and that the other people that I filmed in that video, I had had permission from their parents already. Like I knew to think of this ahead of time to make sure, hey, we're on YouTube, we have 100,000 subscribers or wherever we were at at the time. We're getting a lot of views. Like, are you okay with your minor child being in our videos? And I would get permission. And in fact, it got to the point a year or two after that, especially when we were doing brand deals and I was getting paid for things If people's kids were in my videos, I was having them sign permission slips. Like Carly did a ton of brand deals with Justice Clothing Store, which was probably the coolest thing ever. I'll try to remember to bring that up again when I talk about brand deals. But, um... Anyways, people weren't really understanding YouTube quite yet, you know what I mean? And this mom was just, whatever, on her high horse and didn't appreciate the fact. She said you could see that it said the elementary school name for a split second. And I'm like, well, I can blur that out or crop it out. And the principal was like, you just need to take the video down. And I remember being so upset and so scared that like something bad was gonna happen to me if I didn't take the video down, that I did. I, I made it private for a while. The video's back up on my channel now, has been for a long, long time, because I finally got the confidence to be like, look, your kid's not even in my video. Like, just shut the hell up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just, I don't know. Again, introvert, shy, didn't know better. What I find ironic about that is the same parents who was like, oh, she's filming at the school and putting it on her YouTube channel are the same ones that are at the classroom taking class pictures and pictures and stuff of other activities happening at the school and posting them on their Facebook page, pictures of my child without my permission, but that's okay because you only have a hundred friends but I have 100,000 followers on YouTube. That was the real issue. So did it come from, I don't know what the feelings were behind it, but I just remember that story of me being so scared. The principal's like, you need to take your YouTube video down. Anyways, March 2015 was my first paid video. We're talking about brand deals now. First paid video, They it was with Personal Creations. Do you guys remember? They're still in business, I'm pretty sure. They sell like, especially holiday stuff. This was an Easter promotion. And I remember we got like a rug that said like our family nests with the kids' names and just like personalized gifts. So I got to get all this free stuff, plus they paid me $300. That was my first paid brand deal and I was like I can't believe I'm getting paid to like do something that I would do anyways so it was pretty cool I would say that next year like 2015 2016 and as the years went on I think the craziest thing always was like going to the dance competitions and have people come up and be like oh my god Carly, I love your guys' channel, and they would get pictures with Carly, sometimes with me, and it's, it's weird. It's hard to even put into perspective, because it's not like, you know, you're Taylor Swift and you're getting bombarded by people when you walk in, but it's like that whole, you know, you're just walking down the hallway, getting ready to go perform your dance number, and someone's like, oh, that's Carly from My Family Nest, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. April 2015, I know I said I was going to talk about brand deals, but I'm going to try to follow my notes or I'm going to forget stuff. April 2015, we actually got interviewed by the local news station. 
and the kids were 10 and 12 years old, Chase and Carly. It was just Chase and Carly. We went to the news studio, we got a tour of the place, and it was this morning show, I think it was on Sundays, that they interviewed us, and the whole interview was just about being like a local YouTube sensation. And we were almost to 200,000 subscribers by that time. And it just seemed so surreal. Um, I was so, so nervous to be interviewed. <laughs> Part of me felt like just not worthy. And what if I'm gonna say something wrong? Because even though it was being filmed and in my mind, like I can edit anything that I don't want put in or I make a mistake or mess up my words and have to start over. We were told there is no editing on this program. When we do interviews, it is what it is. There's no do-overs. So I'm just like, <laughs> I know my armpits were probably sweating up a storm, but um, still a very memorable experience that I'll never forget. That that was pretty cool. November that year, we hit 300,000 subscribers. By January 2016. 400,000 subscribers so it's just insane and here's a list of some of the brand deals Disney, Walgreens, Hasbro, Target, Zillow, Google, Verizon, Chrysler. Um, you can actually go to ourfamilynest.com and up at the top there's a thing that says brand portfolio and I have a whole bunch of brand logos of brands that I worked with for like Instagram or TikTok deals and then there's like I think three pages you have to click through for a lot of the video brand deals that we've done and sometimes I forget to update it um, maybe I'll update it sometimes two or three times a year April 2018 is when we hit 1 million subscribers so over that time frame between 2015 and let's say 2018 we bought this property we built our dream home we're on 10 acres, we have a pond, we have our pool, we like we have everything we could possibly want here. And that, to go back and watch some of those videos, and I, I said I wasn't gonna cry in this video, I'm not gonna cry in this video. Um, it's because of YouTube. I mean, my husband has never quit his job. He has the same physician recruiting company today that he started back in 2007, that we actually started together. And never once did we think, you know what, you're making enough money, I'm gonna quit kind of thing. Have there been times, especially summers, where maybe he's worked a little less hard <laughs> because the money was pouring in? Certainly. But never was it, you know, I'm just not going to work this year or I'm taking a year off or anything like that. So I've always been thankful for that, that we never put all of our eggs in one basket because that's scary to do. You never know. I mean, a person who has a job, you could lose your job tomorrow. You have your own business. Something could go wrong. You could ruin your reputation. Whatever it is you're doing, like say we're on YouTube went through that whole adpocalypse and COPA, is it COPA or COPA, where I had to mark majority of my videos prior to Carly being 13 years old as made for kids and lost all of our ad revenue on those older videos because there were minors in my videos. Um, comments were shut down on family YouTube channels for a long time. And honestly, that's when I started seeing a decline in my YouTube channel. It was greatly affected by some of those negative things that family channels had to go through. And that was back when, some of you guys may, re may remember this, that was back when a lot of the family YouTubers started making those superhero videos. They were all putting on the unitards and they were princesses and Pokemon and... And I remember Ken saying, well, if that's what everybody else is doing, we should do it. Come on, that's how we've made all of our money is following trends. And I'm like, the hell I'm ever putting on a unitard and becoming a cartoon character just so I can remain not going to happen. I didn't consider it even, I didn't Google the price of costumes or anything. I was like, there's no way I'm doing this. 
I will continue to make the content that feels authentic to me and our family and I'm not going to force our kids to do this kind of stuff. Like, no. Let's talk about the brand deals a little bit. Oh, I wrote HelloFresh, Best, Best Fiend, Sleep Number, Scott 1000. We did a thousand videos. <laughs> A thousand, no, we did not do a thousand videos. Scott 1000, we did multiple videos with them. Um, the only one that was really funny when I was going through my brand portfolio that I've done, I've never done anything that I didn't want to do. I can tell you that. And if you ask anybody who is on social media, who gets consistent offers for brand deals, they'll tell you that they say no more than they say yes, which has always rang true for me because if it's something that I'm like, mm, like I get a lot of like skincare, health and beauty type stuff that I'm just like, I would never use that. I'm not gonna try to get my followers to use that stuff. So anyways, the one that makes me chuckle is Folgers Coffee. The rate was so good <laughs> and I don't drink coffee. <laughs> I hate coffee, but I drank coffee for that video. That's the only one that I'm like a little embarrassed about. Uh, Mattel, Energizer, Maytag, like when we built this house, we got our washer and dryer for free. We did multiple videos with Maytag, like just stuff like that. Like it's just, it's not normal life. Like you're building this house and, oh, Maytag wants to work with you guys and you're going to pick out your washer and dryer and, and you're going to get freaking paid. And guess what? I don't know exactly on that brand deal, but I can give you a guesstimate of what I think I got paid, probably $10,000 per video, and we did more than one. Think of what that paid for, for other things within our new home when we were moving in. A kitchen table, a couch, you know. That is why when we were building this house, it really truly felt like that ultimate dream because it was like, I remember when we met with our architect and we like we built our house like through a custom home builder. He doesn't like replicate the same house ever. The first house that we had showed him that we liked, he was like, oh, okay, you'd probably be within your budget, you know. We just threw out a number of what we thought our budget would be. But we were making stupid money back then, guys. Um, when they came back on this property, which was all trees, they were like, this is where your house is going to have to sit. And we knew we wanted a pond and a pool. And why we would have thought that the pond and the pool both would go in the backyard, I don't really know why, but he was like, no, your house has to sit here. It's the highest elevation. Pond goes in the front, pool in the back. And I was like, well, then I, we need a different house because I need a front porch on my house if I'm going to have a pond. Do you know how many times I've sat on that front porch to look at the pond? <laughs> Anyway, so when we sat down with the architect and we had shown him this like photo we found online and we're like, we like this and we want this and we want that. And he's like, you guys just upped your price by about 200,000. And we're like, if I had to sit in a meeting like that today, if Ken and I were like, oh, we're gonna build another house and they said another 200,000, we'd be like, oh, then never mind, never mind. Original idea, let's go back to the original idea. And I'm only being honest about that stuff for, again, future reference, hi grandkids, um, of just how kind of ridiculous life becomes when, don't get me wrong, it's not like we won the lottery and it was just like, oh, you wanna go buy a Lamborghini? No, no. If there's still certain things that I'm just like crazy, like decisions we made, but when it came to the whole, home to the house that we knew it was kind of like a number one this money we're making is not going to last forever number two this is our one chance to build our dream home we're never going to do this again our kids are growing up so quickly if we're going to do this we need to do this now or it's never going to happen we just went for it but anyways um the justice brand deal things like that um Here's a little girl in basically, what, elementary, junior high, probably elementary, because I'm trying to remember when Justice even went out of business. It was still in business for quite a few years, even after she outgrew it. But anyways, we would do these brand deals with Justice, and they would be like, here's a $1,000 budget for clothes, which the one video then she ended up doing like with friends, 
and then I think we did a couple of them with friends. So here it's like these little girls are in justice on a freaking shopping spree and then I would still get paid like 10, 12 grand. Um, on average, most of my brand deals were between 10 to $15,000. And when you just think about, okay, sometimes a brand deal is, you know, sharing how to use a product, what you like about it. And I don't know, I guess I'm trying to put into words exactly how much sense to me it didn't make. Because in a sense, I would be like, okay, maybe there's a doctor who performs a heart surgery and I'm not counting hospital fees and stuff like that, but the doctor's fee for like a three hour heart surgery is probably like 10 grand. Let's just say, I don't really know. I'm just saying for, to compare saving someone's life and I'm getting paid 10 grand to make a video about a product and put it in a single YouTube video. Like it literally felt like we were ripping these people off. I never really quite understood how it was so possible for people to be get, getting paid so much money for something. But I guess when you look at it in terms of like marketing and what brands pay for like commercials compared to the reach and the audience of putting their brand in a YouTube video. like. They're paying millions of dollars to marketing companies for campaigns for commercials and celebrities sharing their brands and stuff like that. So really for a company like that, like what's $10,000? Nothing. You know what I mean? So when you compare it to that, it seems crazy. My biggest brand deal that I ever did was more money than a lot of people make in a year. It wasn't quite six figures but pretty freaking close. And there were times when I would be in tears of like, the, just, it's so unbelievable that just this stay at home mom, college dropout, you know, like you just feel not worthy. It's crazy. Luckily through all of this, we've been extremely smart with our money when we had crazy amounts of money coming in every month we saved a lot we immediately started working with the financial advisor and was like how much money can we invest every month that we're not even gonna like miss it at all i can tell you right now that it's more money than i could afford to invest right now like we're not making the money <laughs> that we were making back in 2016, 2017, 18, whatever, that whole time frame. And we always knew, we used to have family meetings and conversations and try to explain to the kids, like you may have had this most amazing Christmas, you know, getting a computer for Christmas and an iPad and this and that. And this is not going to be our life forever. Like we are blessed, we are so thankful but this is not reality. Like, still just crazy to think about. So that brings me to January 2020, when I will actually link this video down below. It is when we made the decision to no longer post videos daily, which you have no idea how hard it was to make that decision because we had committed to, since October 2014, posting every single day. So we did it, what, all of 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, five years and a few months. That's a long time to post a video every single day. And it just felt like I was admitting failure by quitting posting every day and kind of kept trying to like make it a positive thing instead of a negative thing. And I just burnt out. I'll be honest, I was burnt out and definitely needed the break. And then it was just the fact that the whole world went through the spring, summer, fall of 2020, the wearing of the, and not being able to leave your house. We had more people living here than normal, like, you know, people that were staying here. So it's kind of like I had that pick that momentum back up because it was like, oh, there's more people here. Andrew was working from home. 
like there was more to film especially that summer that was such a great summer not just for youtube but just like life you know i mean it was horrendous what we all had to go through but as a family it was just i wish i would have enjoyed it more it was such a scary time for everyone that it's not like you were like oh this is a vacation but looking back on it now it's like such a good time just for our family oh, some other notes i have in here 2017 we used to have where we had our subscribers send in like video outros and when I was going through some of our videos and I was seeing some of the outros, I'm getting like so teary eyed watching those because it was such a cool thing to do. I remember getting so many of these little video outros and they would just be like, oh, the end of the video. They would maybe say why they loved our channel and thanks for watching, subscribe, thumbs up, blah, blah, blah. If they were under a minute, you know, probably like 15, 20 seconds. It was the coolest, funnest thing ever. I'm so glad we did that. November 2019 is when I launched Ivy and Sage, my clothing company. And I really, truly launched that because I thought that it was something fun that Carly and I were going to be able to do together. When we started it from the beginning, we were doing it together. And she just lost interest so quickly. Like, it went from her like wanting to try on all the clothes and take photos to like she just lost interest. And I get it. I mean, she's, you know, 14 years old, 13, 14 years old. Like, that's not how a teenager wants to spend their time. So I did my best there for a while trying to make it work and trying to pivot more to selling like women's clothing instead of so much of the teenager stuff since she didn't really want to be part of it anymore. And um again when the thing hit in the 2020 um at first like we had a huge spike in sales because i think everybody we weren't going to the stores and shopping we were shopping online so my sales like kept going up 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 and i was like oh my gosh i can't believe like this is like i'm gonna this is gonna work like sales are going up this is great and then slowly towards the end of summer and moving into fall just eh, eh, like you know started dipping back down and so that i believe i closed that the end of 2020 so only did that for two years but it was a great learning experience to have like a, an online store just knowing how to do all of the marketing and just the purchasing of products and there's good things bad th experiences that come with all that so overall like being on YouTube sharing our lives going through everything that we went through to like get to this moment today I have like zero regret I loved all of it I think the opportunities that we got to go through in terms of like vacations travel being seeing the kids get like treated with the extra little things that they pamper you with when you're like oh they're influencers here at our hotel and making them special drinks and just going above and beyond i think it's probably one of the coolest things that has come out of our youtube journey certainly our dream home that we still try to decide on a daily um, if we're staying, if we're leaving. And it was funny because the other day I was on realtor.com and Chase is like, why are you looking at houses? I thought the plan is to stay here. And I'm like, plans change on a monthly basis and I'm always looking. Because you just never know that perfect house could come along in the perfect location. And until that happens, I don't think I'll know because it's hard to leave this for something that's so much less than this. You know what I mean? I do think a lot has changed since we were family vloggers. I don't think it'll ever be what it was back then um, when we were at our peak. I don't even see people doing the amount of brand deals that we did back then. Like I don't see anybody doing the amount of 
sponsorships and stuff anymore. I'm not even doing as much anymore, regardless of like my lower views on my videos. It's just everybody's on Instagram and TikTok and you know, and I've done some stuff there too, but I'm just like, it's different because the budget's not the same. If they're just paying you for some Instagram stories or, um, you know, put a reel on your Instagram page, it's not the same as paying a YouTube channel that has hundreds of thousands or maybe a million subscribers like we were at the time. So I always have to ask myself, I don't know if this is a tip for anybody, like, okay, this is what the offer is to get this product and make an Instagram reel out of it. I have to take taxes out of that. Is it really worth it after taxes? I always ask myself that question. Immediately take the taxes out. And when I just think of it in terms of time and whatever, I just say no more to stuff than I say yes because it just doesn't, doesn't feel right. You know what I mean? I really didn't plan out how I was going to end this video. I almost feel speechless. And it's like almost a cross between, I'm like so happy to share the story, but it's almost like sad too. It's like you can't help but have a little bit feeling of, um, it's not the closing of a chapter. I'm not trying to say like, oh, I'm done with YouTube. I'm not making that announcement by any means, but it's like, it has already felt a little bit like the close of a chapter. And this is what the, it certainly has felt like the close of many chapters. And, and in a sense, it does sort of feel like we're coming to the end of the story. And I don't know what the end is going to look like yet or when the ending is going to get there. I just, kind of like along for the ride, <laughs> just like you guys. You know as much as I do in terms of when is there ever gonna be like a last video? I don't know. It seems odd to like end something that I've done for so long. Like I said, I feel like even if it was once a week, once a month, like I feel like there's so many people invested. Like you're gonna have to know when the kids all get married and I'm finally a grandma and if and when we ever do move. At the very least, as long as Instagram is around, I know I'm not leaving that platform anytime soon. So make sure you're following me there. Um, I would assume I'm not gonna just every one day be like, okay, I'm done posting and it's just the last video. But at the same time, I can't imagine being like, okay, I'm gonna make this video and be like, all right guys, this is the last one. I don't know. I don't know what it's supposed to look like when you get to this point. I'm just happy and I feel re-energized and excited about the future because you guys know, I tried to do the whole work with Ken thing on the business that we started together back in 2007 and it just didn't feel like it was, you know, doing it for me. I needed something a little bit more and the way all this just fell into place is just, it's fun. I want to help other people. I want to help you guys make your dreams come true. Those of you who have, have young kids and you want to stay home with your kids, I get it. That's the whole reason why I started YouTube is I wanted to stay at home and make money. And the whole plan was supposed to be as soon as all of our kids were in school, I was going to go back to work. And then we started the recruiting company before all the kids were in school. So it was like, okay, well, I'll work with Ken instead of getting a job. And then I started doing YouTube and it just all worked out the way it's supposed to. But I will say like, you can't make, you can't expect changes to happen in your life if you're not willing to make changes. Does that make sense? And I've never been afraid to make changes. That's one thing to take away from all the stuff that you have watched us do in the past 10 years of trying different businesses, trying different things, and you don't worry about failing. You just do what makes you happy and try your best to make it work. And not everything's gonna work out every time, 
but when it does work out, it's pretty amazing.